I'm going to turn on the chat ski here so I can see what's going on out there. It's Wildwood Live Day in the Orange Room, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Wildwood Live Day. Drade, it is I. <laughs> Folks, they're um, they're starting to tune in from a variety of different places. I like it from all over the darn place. Uh, I'd like to request them's the breaks, says Carl. I'm telling you what's wrong.
Thing called them's the damn breaks, ladies and gentlemen. Someone, someone wanted to hear it, so we played it. Uh, mm, wow! Can you dig it? Will you dig it? Can you dig it? Will you dig it? I'm using this delicious uh, Stratocaster. Some people call it a Stratocaster. Those people are fools. It's a Stratocaster, featuring the three single coil pickups. But in this instance, I have my Fishman Fluence pickups in here. This is actually a uh, Wildwood 1055 Strat from the Fender Custom Shop. 10 inch radius for ease of play. 6105 fret so I can get under those strings and give them a damn good wiggling. What? Quarter sewn neck, nice and light body. I could throw this right through the screen. It'd hit you right on the head, you'd go, hi. And then it would bounce right back like a damn sonic boomerang. And then I'd grab it aloft once again and proceed to rock as if nothing had transpired at all. That's the power of the internet. Right, Dylan? Scheiße, Ficken. Wow, I just said dirty words in German. Uh, can you dig it? Someone says, I can dig it. Jeff, I see you, and I like it. Maple is a snapping wood, isn't it? Maple is a snapping wood. How far off is your floating bridge, please? You know, it's about mm, not quite a. Oh, I'm sorry, there's there's chords in here. It goes up about a half step if I lean in on it. Uh, master built by Festus McCorkendale, indeed. Lawton Childs, who is it? It's Lawton Childs. Come play in Georgia, you beautiful, burly man. Grant, I'd love to come down there to Georgia, but we got this damn pandemic going on that it refused to subside. As a matter of fact, it's percolating even as we speak. People are getting all overconfident, spitting in public and such. And all of a sudden, we're going to get in some kind of a damn hootenanny once again. But you know what? We're going to try to get down there as quick as we can once the pestilence is passed. That's a song right there, isn't it? Once the pestilence is past, once the pestilence is past, we're gonna get up our ass. Once the pestilence is past, pestilence is past, pestilence is past. What a pain in the dog on night we have yes. Once the pestilence is past. Whoa, once the pestilence is past. Woo! Mm. Can you dig it? Come back to Lambertville next time you see you in the uh, see your fishman rep. Okay, John, we'll see what we can do about that. Uh, may I ask if you had a puggle plug in that combo, peace and love from St uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Greetings, Sweden. I'd love to get back there. It's been a while since we've been there. I think the last time I was there was in Jutteboy. Uh, no pedals right now in the amplifier. I'm using my signature amplifier from Cock Amplifiers, the Greg. Uh, going straight in. And uh, I do have a, the, the lead sound on here is pretty doggone savage, if we're honest. It sounds bad to the bone. Um, you know, someone asked for a little peace and love. We could probably do that song. That's a good one. <laughs> I think he was just saying peace and love, and I was saying love and peace. That's the name of that song. That's a good song. Dog, I want to put a little bit of that. I got a little uh, harmonic vibrato right on board the amp, and everyone's like, what is that univibe you're playing? It's the harmonic vibrato that's on the damn amp, okay? It's on the damn amp. Well, listen to it. Ay, yo, we, yo, we, yo, we, yo, we, yo, we, yo, we. Oh, we, oh, we, oh, we, oh, we, oh.
Yes, indeed. Can you dig it? A song called uh, The Expressions Peace and Love. This is Love and Peace. And the Crusaders did it. The Jazz Crusaders years ago did that song. Um, uh, what's that gentleman whose last name is Adams? I think he wrote the song. I can't remember. I first heard Jeff Beck and uh, Les Paul jam over. There used to be a show in 1983 late at night called uh, Rock and Roll Tonight. And there was a house band. Actually, a guy I would get to know later named Rick Jagger was the drummer. Not Mick Jagger. Rick Jagger was the drummer on that show. Uh, a bunch of all-stars, um, L.A. guys. And uh, Billy Squire was actually on that show that night as kind of the host. And Jeff Beck and um, Les Paul jammed over that song. And I remember hearing it, and just it grabbed me right away. I was like, what is that song? And for years, I didn't know what the song was. And then I finally figured it out. And uh, uh, Duke Levine does a great version of that song. That's where I got reacquainted with it again. So the version I do is kind of a variation of Duke's version and a little shout out to the kind of slower, bluesier, kind of funkier version that um, uh, our friends Les Paul and Jeff Beck did. Um, can you dig it? All right. It sounds wrong. Cool. I'm glad you enjoyed that clap. Clapper socks. Sounds wrong. Sounds right. Sounds wrong. Sounds right. Uh-huh. Say something delicious. I thought I just did. I thought there was delicious things being said. A left and dog gone right, fellas. Is Paul Brown out there moderating activities? Paul Brown. Paul Brown. Can you dig it? Paul Brown. Mm -hmm. Jimi Hendrix just said super. Thanks, Jimmy. Jimmy's in the house. I'm glad you're able to make it uh, through the other plane of existence, uh, past, uh, past the, uh, um, yeah, the river sticks, as the case may be. Greg, are you coming to the DFW for the Dallas Guitar Show this year? Well, I certainly hope so. If that happens, we'll be doggone there. How would Jimmy Page play Over the Rainbow? I don't know. I don't know how that's possible. I just like the sound of a Strat sometimes, doggone. It just sounds so good. I think we, we were sporting a strat. We played a little tune of mine called uh, Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. We did a little instrumental version of that. And the kids seemed to dig it. So we might do that again just because it's fun. Right?
Can you dig it? Can I dig it? Yeah. Oh, my right ear is getting a little getting a little torqued for the kids. Lucky for you, it's time for me to go. Oh, it's lucky for me. It's time for Dylan to go. Dylan's got to roll. He's got to get his taxes done. So it's going to be just me and you all for the rest. Say thank you to Dylan for tuning in. Thank you to Dylan for coming here and rocking and rolling and rocking and rolling. Uh, save the heels. Woo! It's a little loud in here in the orange room. Yeah, that little lick I've had for quite some time. Basically, just go, oh, I gotta get that. Oh, yeah. When the snare is on, it cause so much trouble. kind of dick uh put the pick in between the first and middle fingers there i do that little chicken picker thing <laughs> Would love to get a shout out. Hey, Barry, what's going on? Berry flavored. I like that kind of a handle. I can dig it all. Mm hmm. <laughs> tell me about that strat, says Bobby. Well, Bobby, let me tell you a little story. I'm going to tell you a little story about a strat. This one, I probably got into my grubby little mitts about seven years ago. A lot of folks ask when I'm out at Wildwood doing the videos, do I ever get, um, uh, shall we say, addicted to a guitar I might play that I have to have it? And that's happened quite a few times. I actually got a couple of these guitars from Wildwood. Uh, these two right here, this is, uh, they're both, this is a 57 Strat Relic. Did I say that it was a 55 before? This is a 55. The Telly's a 55 Relic. This is a 57 uh, Wildwood 10. So Wildwood does their special runs of guitars. I think most people know that, but for those who do not, they do special runs of um, guitars from most of the big manufacturers. Uh, kind of a co-branded thing. It's actually a Fender guitar, obviously, Fender Custom Shop. But it's called a Wildwood 10 57 Strat Relic. So it's got a 10-inch radius. It's got 6105 frets. It's quarter sawn, maple neck. They have to be a certain weight. They're very light. And uh, usually they have some fancy dancy pickups in it, but these are actually my Fishman Fluence pickups in here that I really dig. So uh, that's what's happening here. So nice and light. The actual color of the Strat is a white. I guess it's a uh, vintage white, transparent, but it's ash body, so you can see the the wood grain through it, and uh, it's delish. So. <laughs> Sounds good. It's kind of the Mary Kay color, but it doesn't have the gold hardware. If it had the gold hardware, it would be a Mary Kay. Can you dig it? Thank you. 
So for that instance, I actually had my second channel. So I've got the lead channel on the um, uh, the caulk amplifier that bears my name, the Greg. And I've got the gain boost on as well. And then I can just slide back on the volume control and get... <laughs> Is it a 56 track? No, it's a 57 as far as the custom shop delineation is concerned. Can and will you dig it? Who is your favorite guitar player whom you've met or played with in your career? Boy, that's hard to say. I mean, I definitely, you know, I'm a huge Jeff Beck fan. I did have an awesome experience with Jeff Beck. Um, he saw our band play in Germany. And uh, he said just very, very nice things, which I thought was awesome. And... Um, then we hung out with him the next day. It was a Fender event. Uh, that was totally awesome. Uh, the Albert King thing was pretty awesome. When he gave me the thumbs up, I got done doing so. I looked inside the stage there. He said, they're going, ah. Oh. That was awesome. Playing with Joe Bonamassa was great. He was very complimentary. Uh, getting to know the guys in Little Feet and playing with those guys was a blast. Um, every now and again, this things happen. Like, you know, I was a big fan of Robbie McIntosh, who played with the Pretenders, and he ended up playing with uh, Paul McCartney and, the other day, I saw he had a Facebook profile, so I liked him. And he got back to me, hey, I'm a big, you know, I said, I'm a big fan. And he goes, I'm a big fan of yours. I've watched your stuff, and you're great. It's just, it's crazy. So I've been very, very fortunate that uh, I've got to meet a lot of uh, people that I really looked up to uh, growing up as an axman. And then um, all of a sudden, you meet them, and they're like, hey, I dig what you do, and yada, yada, yada. And they say nice stuff. It's, it's a trip. Um, so it's gratifying. If I might be so bold. Uh, so those are the Fishman pickups. Wow, I need to check those out. Yeah, I dig them. Nigel, they're savage. Plays some Clapton. I like that kind of talk. Uh, thoughts on Johnny Winter? Love him. Eric Johnson? Love him. You know, I've never, uh, I've never figured out Eric Johnson's songs, though. That's the weirdest thing. Uh, I remember I had those first two records, and I remember enjoying them immensely, but I never, for whatever reason, figured out any of those songs. Um... Clapton, of course, there's all, all kinds of different tunes of his. That we got from oldie we got
just like that. Oh, no. Can you dig it? There's old love. There's bad love. There's so many loves in the Clapton arsenal. What about a bell bottom loon? The Vito I views are oh yeah the Vito interviews yeah 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 that he has some great stories absolutely we've had you know I'm I'm just kind of booking these things as they come to mind there's a bunch of buddies of mine I want to get on these interviews that we're doing we're doing a Wildwood at Home series of interviews that you can see on the Wildwood uh, YouTube channel and uh, I'm actually going to start putting them into a podcast form so far we did uh, uh, we did David Grissom. We did uh, Josh Smith. We did Rick Vito. Uh, we did Steve Lukather uh, two days ago. That's a <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, did Roscoe Beck yesterday? Uh, next week we've got some good ones. We've got uh, Andy Timmons. We got my buddy Jeff Pivar. We got the great Deke Dickerson as well. So we're uh, we're having some good good um, um, interviews. Absinthe. Oh, Mark, thank you for requesting that one. I always enjoy playing that one. Absinthe is a tune of mine from the uh, um, Defenestrator record. There was also a live version of it on the Strat's Got Your Tongue. And I wrote a little kind of mysterious minor blues-ish thing in C minor. Uh, I actually used a Clapton Strat on that track on the studio version.
song C minor a gospel blues ish thing huh now uh, just a quick recap um, so I'm in the clean channel of the amp so what's cool about the Fishman pickups is that there's a uh, uh, there's two voices a second voice that's a little hotter so for instance on that I wanted to have just a little bit more muscle on the clean sound, should I desire it. So here's regular clean sound. If I grab the tone control and pick it up, it goes to this. So just something a little bit more muscly. And then I can turn the volume down, don't lose any highs. Then I have that extra little bit of beef. So when I'm doing my clean leads, I get just a little bit more oomph de oomph. So that's why 99% of the time when I leave my house, I've got my um, guitar with my, usually, of course, my signature Reverend with my um, signature Tele pickups. But if I use this guitar with these um, Fluence pickups with that second voice, a chord into this amp, I pretty much got everything I could possibly need. Can you dig it? Mm-hmm. Can and will you dig it? Uh, the people's minor key is C minor. Can you dig it? Uh, there was a question right Loved your and Malford's jealous guy. Oh, I'm glad you dug that. Yeah, I do like to use, I, a lot of times I'll put my palm on the bridge of the Stratocaster in question and I'll go, just give it a little. Yeah. tune to mine called uh, Sleep Tight, but I do that quite a bit in there. I use that two position on the Strat. I like that floating trim, so I can get that. <laughs> Just love that sound. I love it. Can you dig it? So actually, I, I like to say that uh, the Fluence pickups made it fun for me to play a Strat again. And people are like, you know, you're always dissing strats. I'm not dissing strats, okay? I played one for years on end. Um, I like tellies and T-type -type, type guitars because they just can take my savagery. And all th there's only three sounds, and they're all good. And I can beat the hell out of it, and it stays in tune. Strats are a little bit more persnickety, especially the way I like to play them with the, you know, this business on the bridge and my string bending and so on and so forth. So... Uh, but these pickups, uh, the Fluence pickups, actually are so good in every one of the positions on the toggle switch. All five positions of the toggle switch sound like unbelievably good. So it's uh, 
it's fun because most of the times before I'd have strats and they always kind of had sweet spots. You know what I mean? On the toggle switch, it'd be like, yeah, the, the bridge sounds great and the two is dialed in. The neck pickup, you got to kind of get a little bit more gumption out of it. But the middle position is, nah, and the four is good for some rhythm stuff, but not for lead. You know, this kind of stuff. There'd always be a conversation going on in my head <laughs> when I'm playing a strat. Well, I'd like to do this at this particular point in the song, but if I do that arpeggiated part later on, so if I wiggle too large or hard on the whammy bar, I might pull the G string a little bit out of tune. So when I do that thing at the end, there's so this is this is why uh, I t tend to not play strats. But as I said, now that I have a guitar that sounds so good in all the positions, um, they sound good. Nicholas Alexander asks, "Are you using Fluence pickups on the strat?" Yes, I am. These are the single pos uh, single width, as they're called, uh, strat pickups. Um, uh, congratulations also to your son. He's doing a great job. You're doing a great job together. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. How about some Jeff Beck? You know, what's so sad is I, I haven't really learned all that many Jeff Beck songs. Uh, of course, I always did a version of, you know. I used to know back in the day. Uh, oh, you know, I, I, I don't do the Jeff Beck version, but I do a, uh, a version of my own of, uh, uh, if I can remember it. fun on the strat today folks is that wrong i don't think so i don't think that's wrong mm -hmm. 
I'm hearing that Neil Sean solo for it. When the lights go down in the city. Yeah, Blow by Blow is a great record. There's no question about it. <laughs> Listen to those records again. It's been a long time. Er. Right? Capo Debo did. But da, 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 da. Greg, I was wondering if you would be so kind as to have a Google Meet in the near future with uh, LaGrange Middle School students at my rock and crew club and talk all things music. You know what, Carmen? We might be able to do that. Can you message me through um, uh, through Facebook? That would be the way to go. If you could, that would be awesome. Uh, Two-ply towel. We know what that means, Patrick, you savage rascal. How are we doing on time? Oh, we got a l- I'm going to switch over to the telly quick. Wednesday night, Grace Presbyterian in the house. Well, all right, Marky Mark. <laughs> All right, I'm switching over to our friendly neighborhood uh, telemacaster for a minute here while for our last 10 minutes. And I got to rush over and do a session. Oh, over at a studio, I will be masked up as to not spread sweet pestilence. Sweet pestilence. Don't want to spread it. I don't want to spread speed pestilence. I just don't want to do it. Uh, da, 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 da. Hello, Drade. Hendrixisms, please. Boy, you know, I, Patrick, I did a whole bunch of sweet Jimmyisms earlier. What in the name of sweet Jims? What in the name of sweet Jim? Uh, uh, let's see. What is the uh, bell bottom loveliness? Oh, yes. Yes. What was the first records I ever what? The first record I, I liked the cover so much I bought it blew me away and then I dropped the needle. Oh yes. Born in Madison, now in Honolulu, Aloha, Aloha yourself, my friend. <laughs> Telly from the Fender Custom Shop, Wildwood 10 edition. What do you think of Tellys with P90s? Well, I have a new set of P90s coming out with Fishman. There'll be a Fishman Fluence P90 set, another signature set for myself. And that's going to go into a new Reverend instrument that's coming out. Um, Hopefully before the end of the year, if we can get all of our stuff together. Hate one, I'm lead. Lots of bleeps on the Luke interview. <laughs> yeah, a few. There's a few. Uh, relic or closet classic? You know what? I actually like the Journeyman Relic uh, myself, but this is actually a uh, this is a, a regular relic. Uh, Thank you. 
<laughs> Bushwell. Right? Bushwell. Uh, did you see here Steve Vai's new song, Candle Something? Yeah, I did see a little bit of that. It's kind of funny. He uh, Last time I saw him, uh, we were down at Sweetwater, and he says, you know, I'm doing these things where I'm betting, and I always say, I got that from, he didn't say I got it from me. He goes, you know, the stuff that Greg Cock does. I'm like, thanks, Steve. I like that shout out. Uh, so, yeah, he's been working on a little bit of that stringy, stringy stuff. Can you dig it? Uh, twang that telly to an inch of its life. It needs to be. It needs to be throttled. I do like Blind Blake for sure. Uh, I like old Robert Johnson. I like um, uh, I like Sunhouse. I like Skip James. I listen to a fair bit of all those fellas. <laughs> Uh, neck profile on this one is a 55, so it's a it's a bigger U, but not as big as a 52. Come on now. was here. Prefer oh, what a good sound. My input jack's getting a little crustificated. Uh, all right, folks, we are about at that time. Any last questions out there in, in, in movie land? In movie land. Come on, Greg Meister, do a full soup to nuts teaching of lessons online. Unlike a lot of the same old Shredmeisters, you would be amazing, big bro. Well, I appreciate that. I actually have a whole hell of a lot of uh, instructional stuff. If you go to guitarinstructor.com, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, of course, I got a bunch of books. I got a bunch of books and DVDs through Hal Leonard. You can get them on my website. You can get them wherever. But I, I have a lot of stuff. The only reason why I haven't done a True Fire thing, they were friends of mine. I think I've told this story before, but because I have such a strong relationship with Hal Leonard, they would just prefer that I don't. Um, so, and the Hal Leonard folks have been very good to me over the years. So I don't want to rock the boat, the rock the boat, baby, rock the boat, but to give my boat, baby. You know what I'm saying? But I might do something. We'll see. Something different. Uh, the Hal Leonard series is fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Spider. I appreciate that. Skype lessons are cool too. Are cool too. Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. Um, Greg's guitar summer camp. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, question, Greg. Jeff Becker, Jimmy Page. Well, it doesn't have to be an either or. Um, Blue smoke, man. That one's a bitch. Uh. Uh.
What? That one's a pain in the butt. Uh, the other one that's a pain in the butt is the... Uh, 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 Here's some Villanova. Yes, you did. Pet Sounds. You know what? I guess you're supposed to be a fan of Pet Sounds, but I, yes, I mean, magnificent orchestration, beautiful, beautiful melodies, so on and so forth. Do I own the record? No. Did I grow up listening to the Beach Boys? No, I hated the Beach Boys growing up, although I did meet, uh, I meet one of the Beach Boys and I was a wee lad, but uh, to me it was nerdy. You know what I mean? And then later on, it's like, oh, no, you're, you're supposed to love Pet Sounds. Okay. I love Pet Sounds. And beautiful, it's beautiful music. Do I listen to it? No, I do not. I'm just going to tell you right now, I do not. There's a lot of beautiful music that I, I revere and I give credit where credit is due, but do I listen to it? No, because you're allowed to have your own taste. Am I right or am I right? All right, there you go. Uh, the vibrato you used before, was that a Stompock or was that an amp? That is in the amp, my friend. Are you a fan of Exile on Main Street? I will unabashedly say yes. Because uh, I'm into that bad boy rock and roll. As Robin Ford said that, he goes, you like that bad boy rock and roll like I do? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. Stones, filth, cream, Hendrix, dirt. Uh, can you dig it? Uh, I did love the Beatles, but I was more of a latter era Beatles fan. Um, kind of, it started for me with Rubber Soul, but the stuff I listened to back when I was a kid was, it was the White Album, it was uh, Abbey Road, uh, and it was uh, Let It Be. Those were the records I listened to over and over again. And then the earlier stuff didn't appeal to me until I was much older. At first, I thought I was like nerdy. And then, it, plus, it was uh, there were guys that I knew that were just such like power pop fans, and I enjoyed that stuff. Uh, but um, I found those people to be obnoxious. I'm sorry because they hated everything else. I like I like everything, but they're like <laughs> it's all about the song. Yeah, it's all about music. Are we right? Sometimes it's all about groove. Sometimes it's all about melody. Sometimes it's about all of the above, but it's all about music. But some people are like, hey, I, hey, hey, hey. I'm like, you know what? I think songs should be more than a three-minute jingle for adolescent genitalia. What do you think? Is it just me? I'm not judging. I'm just, I'm just saying. Wow, I'm really, I'm, I'm getting out, like, out of my, out of my brain here. Uh, oh, it's about time to go. Listen, I got to run. I got to go to a session. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back. Um, we'll be back on, uh, what is today? Thursday. We'll be back on next Tuesday. I'll be back doing a Fishman thing tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, playing a bunch of crazy things for the kids. And stay tuned for more interviews that will be coming out on the Wildwood YouTube channel. Um, the one with Rick Vito just came out. Some great stories. Uh, and the next ones that will be coming out will be, uh, will be Lukather and the mighty Roscoe back. Good tales. Good tales on those doggone interviews. Uh, and they're no plan. They're just us talking. So can you dig it? All right, folks, thank you so much. We'll see you cats soon. All right, what are we doing here? Come on now. Down at the bottom, there should be something. But I don't know what it's doing. Oh, yes. <laughs>